Greetings, M squared here, and today we're going to graph parabolas using standard form. So we kind of went over this sheet um, the other day. It's your reference sheet. It's going to be in the description. The link to the Google Doc is going to be in the um, description of the video. It's also going to be linked on Canvas. Great idea to have that printed out while we're doing this video so that you can look at it and know what we're doing. So A is the same as the vertex form, so I'm not gonna spend much time on that, but these two right here are gonna be the biggies. So if we can find the vertex of our parabola, we can use our pattern to graph, and then we can find all those other key features too. So the big deal is X equals negative B over 2A. You've got to memorize that. X equals negative B over 2A is both the axis of symmetry and the x coordinate of our vertex. And that enables us to find the y coordinate, which you'll see in a minute. So we wanna make sure that we know those two things. The domain, we've already talked about that, that hasn't changed. The range, once we have it graphed, that's gonna be super easy. The new thing also, c, the y-intercept is c, so that's nice, because when we look at the equation in standard form, we see the y-intercept, so point we can graph right away if it's on our graph anyway. And then solving, we're really gonna kind of save for later, for next chapter, but if I see where the x-intercepts are because it kind of hits the grid at a really beautiful place, not like 1.378, then I will point that out. So let's get started. So hopefully that reference sheet is next to you because we are going to graph some parabolas. So you'll see here that I have an equation. It's in standard form. What I know when I look at it, I know that it's upside down, it opens down because of that negative two in front. I know it's a little bit vertically compressed, so my pattern, right, my pattern isn't gonna be one, three, five, it's gonna be two, six, 10. And I know that my y-intercept is six. So if you don't understand what I mean by pattern, you should go and watch that video because that's the method I'm going to be using today to graph them once we find our vertex. So the key here is you have to know what A, B, and C are. So watch your signs here. A is the number that sits in front of that x squared. That's negative 2. B is the number that sits in, uh, that's multiplied by x, our linear coefficient. That's negative 4. And C is 6. What is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept is 6. You could also write it like this. Either one. Well, what is the axis of symmetry? Well, the formula says the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So first I have to find b over 2a, and then it's the opposite of that. So x equals negative, and then what's b? It was negative 4, and 2 times a. So you'll see that this is my a, my negative 2. This is my b, my negative 4. I've got that minus sign out there too. So this part right here without the negative sign is negative 4 divided by negative 4. Well, that's one. But then I've got this negative out here, so my axis of symmetry is actually negative one. Well, I just found the x coordinate of my vertex. That's super important. So I wanna make sure I know that the relationship between the axis of symmetry and the vertex, because this also is negative b over 2a. To find the y coordinate, I actually found, find f of negative b over 2a, which in this case is negative one. That means I plug negative one back into the original equation. So I'm gonna take negative two and times it by negative one squared. Then I'm gonna take negative minus four times negative one, and then finally plus six. So watch it right here, because a lot of people make this mistake. They forget to square first. Make sure you square the negative one first, which gets you a positive one. And when I square a positive one, then I get times negative two, that's a negative two. When I multiply negative four times negative one, I get four, and then I get a six. Negative two plus four is two, plus six is eight. Now I have my vertex. So I'm really ready to graph with my vertex and my pattern, but let's answer some questions here. Does it open up or down? We kind of talked about that up here. Because of that negative right there, we know it opens down. So I want to talk about these two new words, minimum and maximum. So I'm going to come back over here. So you'll see that a lot, especially in word problems. When a parabola opens up, it has a low point, and that's called the minimum point. When it opens down, it has a maximum. 
has the highest point. It doesn't have a low point because it goes down forever. So especially in word problems, when you're trying to maximize or minimize something, whenever you see those words, they're talking about the vertex. So it's really important. I wanted to kind of get you used to those words and we'll have a little assignment about the minimums and maximums later. But that's what it means. This parabola is going to have a maximum because it opens down. Is it vertically stretched or compressed? Well, we know it's vertically stretched because our absolute value of A was two. And anytime it's bigger than one, it's vertically stretched. What's our domain? All real numbers. Because all Y equals X squared parabolas, the domain is all real numbers. It goes left and right forever. The range, however, we're going to talk about after we graph. So let's graph it. Well, what points do we know? Well, we knew at the beginning, the first point we knew was the y-intercept. So that is always one thing you can graph. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that was one of the points. We also know the vertex, negative one, eight. So one, and then that was six, so seven, eight. So we already have this second point. And if I know that my axis of symmetry is x equals negative one, then I know that there's another point right there. Remember, our pattern was over in, in a, um, a of 2 parabola. It's over 1, down 2, then over 1, down 6, like this guy right there, right? So over 1, down 2. We were up 6, so that means I'm right on the x-axis. Well, I just touched the x-axis. That actually means those are my x-intercepts. So I was going to mention that if it crosses the x-axis in a nice little place. So uh, my x intercepts, my solutions, my roots, are 1 and negative 3. And we'll again talk about that more next chapter, but I wanted to point it out if we see them. Sometimes they're in between two integers, so we don't bother with it with graphing. But if it hits right there, then using my pattern, I could tell. So now what's the range? Well, the range starts here. Remember, it's possible y values, and it goes down forever. So that means it's going to be a y is less than or equal to. And then it's going to be whatever that y coordinate is, which is 8. Right there is 8. And now I have graphed a parabola in standard form. Yeah, I know, kind of a lot. Okay, we've got two more. Um, let's try another one. Hopefully it'll go faster now. So let's do our a, b, and c. Our a is 1 fourth, our b is 1 and our c is negative 5. A lot of people get confused on that when b is 1 because there's no number in front of the x linear coefficient. So keep in mind, if there's an x, because there might not be, if there's no x, then b is 0. But if there's an x and there's no number in front of it, that it is 1, because 1 times x is x. What's the y-intercept? It's negative 5, and again, you can write that two ways. You can write it as a coordinate of points, a coordinate pair, or you can write it just negative 5. The axis of symmetry. Well, let's go to that one. x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals negative b over 2 times a. Oh, some fractions here. So let's remember how to do it. So 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. We still have that negative up there. Oops, sorry. This part's 1 half. We still have a 1 up here, and I will, Ooh, I'm messing it up. Okay, so it's negative 1 divided by 1 half, because this was 1 half. So hopefully you remember that when you divide, this is a division bar, the fraction bar is always a division bar. When you divide fractions, you, so it's, it's kind of like 1, negative 1, divided by 1 half. You change the sign to multiplication, and you flip the fraction over. So it actually becomes negative 1 times 2. Of course, a calculator would help you with that. You can do all that in your calculator. But our x equals negative 2 is our axis of symmetry, because negative 1 divided by 1 half is negative 2. Well, that gives me the x-coordinate of my vertex. So now I have to find f of negative 2. So I go back up to the original and I put my negative 2 in. So negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 5. Always square first. Negative 2 squared is 4 and 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So this gives me a 1 and minus 2 minus 5. Well 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. So my y coordinate is negative 6. So does this parabola have a minimum or a maximum? Well, it opens up because 1 fourth was positive, so it has a minimum. 
Is it vertically stretched or vertically compressed? Well, the absolute value of A is 1 fourth, which means it's between 0 and 1. So this one is vertically compressed. It's going to look a little wider. And our pattern is not going to be 1, 3, 5. It's going to be 1 fourth, 3 fourths, 5 fourths, etc. So we're going to multiply the 1 fourth by each of those. What's the domain? All real numbers. And did I forget the range here? I did. We will talk about that in a minute. All right. So here we go. Let's graph our vertex. Our vertex is negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 2, negative 6. Our axis of symmetry goes right there. We know what our y-intercept is. Our y-intercept is negative 5. I love to graph those two points because if it's two, it's over 2, up 1, that way, it's going to be the same this way because that axis of symmetry means that it's symmetrical. So on the other side, it would be the same one, the same way. So if we're using our pattern, you'd go over one, up a fourth, right, on both sides, and then over one, up three fourths, which is what that one is. And then we go over one, up five fourths, and then over one, seven fourths. Now five fourths is right there, so that would be eight, that would be three fourths, and then another four like that. And I'm not going to keep going but we get the idea. We can just use our little arrows and that's how we would graph that one. So now let's look at our range. What's our range? Well, it goes up forever, right? So that means it's greater than or equal to. And where does it start going up? The Y coordinate. Remember, this is about Y. That's why we're using our Y coordinate was negative six. So the lowest point was negative six. The minimum of this was negative six. Maybe I should have put that. The minimum was negative six. So our range is y is greater than or equal to negative 6. Okay, one more. So I'm choosing this one. I know you're like, one more, really? Well, I'm choosing this one because we don't have an x term. So I want to show you what that looks like. This, um, really, you could say that that's kind of in vertex form or standard form. Kind of both when there's no x, and I'll kind of show you that in a minute because it would kind of be like an x plus zero in there. So we're gonna find our a, which is negative one, our b, there isn't an x, so b is zero, and our c. And what is our y-intercept? Negative 12, because our y-intercept is always c. What's the axis of symmetry? Well, when b is zero, it's always gonna be zero, but I'll show you how that works. If you wrote it out, negative b over two a, well, it's gonna be zero over negative two, which is just zero, which means our x coordinate of our vertex is zero and zero is just about the easiest thing to plug into a function f of zero so i get negative zero squared minus 12 well we can't have a negative zero so our y intercept actually is the same as our vertex when there's no b which is kind of cool so it would kind of be like having that vertex form right where you had negative x plus 0 squared minus 12. And you could see the vertex there. So when there's no c, it's kind of both. All right. Does it open up or down? It opens down because of that negative. So that means I have a maximum. What is the maximum? It's that negative 12. And um, is this vertically stretched or compressed? Well, it's neither. Neither trick question because it was just one. The absolute value of a. So... I should have moved my x-axis down because we've got a negative 12 as our vertex. So what we are going to do is count. Well, I'm just going to move it up here. because I don't want to confuse you by counting by two. So we're going to say that 0, negative 12, whoops, that would be down here. 0, negative 12 is right. Did I really do that? 0, negative 12, and it's way down there. Okay, that's the problem. We're going to just change this, okay, because I can. So I'm going to change that to a positive 12 because otherwise it's not going to go down. Okay, so we're going to change all of that. So it's going down, but it's just at positive 12 now. My apologies. We wouldn't be able to graph it on this little thing because it would be way down here. So we're going to use our 1, 3, 5 pattern because A is 1. And that means from the vertex, which is 0, 12, we're going to go over 1, down 1. And then we're going to go over 1, down 3. And then over 1, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and I don't need to keep going. That's plenty to show that you know what the parabola looks like. So let's do our domain and range. Our domain, of course, would be all real numbers. And our range is going to be y is less than or equal to because it's going down. And wherever that top value is. So that would be a 12. Okay. So that is how you graph and find key features in standard form. So that's going to be your homework for this lesson. Remember that reference sheet, if you need it, is in the description and on Canvas, and you have to memorize x equals negative b over 2a. That is a must. Some people say x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a, but you've got to memorize that because it really helps you find the vertex, and then from there you're golden. Good luck. M squared signing out.